All right, we got us a rental car. First time driving in the Bahamas. Steering wheels on this side of the car. You're definitely putting seatbelts on for this one. Definitely putting seatbelts on in the cooler. Let's go. Let's let this adventure begin. It's my birthday. We're hanging out in the cooler. The key is to stay left. Stay left. We did not get the insurance. Adventure, our little car uh, came to the island caves. Enter at your own risk. Let's see what this is all about. It says, although not historically proven, it has been told that the Lucan Indians were the original inhabitants of the islands and resided in these caves. Later in time, it has been suggested that the pirates and their bounty found refuge from the law by also hiding in the caves. Today, the caves are occupied by the buffy flower bat, commonly known as the fruit bat, and indigenous to the Bahamian Islands. Please respect this national treasure. Wow, so well, there's bats in there. Uh, we might have to hang by the shoes before we go climbing in this cave, because I know we can climb up there, right? We're definitely climbing up there. All right, we'll be right back with more in the We're going to check out the caves here, the cave islands, the island caves. See, it's definitely an active cave. You got families coming out as we speak. People still hanging out now. Man. Um, we're definitely not wearing the right shoes right now. We got to change. We're gonna have to change our shoes. All right. Apparently, we're not gonna change our shoes. Zephyr's already taken off, so I can't let it go without me. Oh, man. Hold on, Zephyr. There seems to be some kind of stairway here. There's bats? Hold on. Yeah, there is bats. See, they're hanging right there? There's a bunch of them just hanging out. I wonder if you can take flash photography on there. Oh, there's one. All right, we're in the cave. Fruit bats in the Bahamas. It's my birthday, so we're doing something different. I yeah, I see him hanging. There's a bat right there hanging. Everywhere. Whoa. All right. Oh, one's on my neck. Cut it yeah. out, Zach. <laughs> Don't do that. That's it. I'm getting out of here. No, you play too much. Look like we got a cave crab hanging out here. Yeah, it took off. Somebody left a beer bottle in here. That's messed up. Pick up that paper, Zephyr. You know, on in the cooler, we are we're conservationists as well. We hate to see stuff like this. It don't matter if we're home or abroad. You don't litter, especially in places like this. It ticks me off. Yeah, you even got a guy working out here. He ain't picking this up. Pick up your trash, people. Pick up your trash. You gotta learn to pick up the trash, man. Yeah. You can't have that kind of stuff like that with trash everywhere, man. In the cool. I mean, let's be real. I don't mean to give the brother a hard time. 
damn it, man. I got something that's nice out here. The last thing that should be is trash. I personally think we got on the wrong shoes for this, but not my wife. What's up there? Beehives? Be careful, watch your step. You know, when you come here, you always damn near lose a toe. Oh. I don't know, but that's a nice drop. Yeah, if you're running. Oh, those are bees. Holy crud. Look at that. Those could be. They ain't killer bees, but. No, they're bumblebees. They're bumblebees. But they got a nice hive. It's a bunch of them. I wish I had my extender with me. I don't know if you can see that. That's awesome. Right there, there's a hive of bees. Let's just hope they don't turn away from that honeycomb and come down here for us. Your name in the, in the rocks like all the other people in there? No, Maybe put in the cooler in the stone. Etch that thing in stone. Oh, is that your bottle of water? We'll get that before we leave. In the cooler. Alright, we've made it here to the world famous straw market. You can't just walk in here though. You gotta be prepared. As soon as you walk in, it is like you're attacked by lions. And we're the feast. Gotta eat. Let's go check it out, Zephyr. You ready? You take your deep breaths. You ready for the bye 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 bye? In the corner. World famous straw market. My um, my Lancetella makes a lot of this stuff you see in here, especially when when it comes to the oh look at the fish. Bahamian, but we 
Many Irish in the Bahamas. Christopher E. Davis, working at the Pompeii Museum of Slavery. Very, very knowledgeable. Very, very knowledgeable about the islands. You want to know anything about the island of Bahamas, you get with Christopher. Christopher E. Davis. Why you on the cast? Hey, Ariel. And um, as you could tell, you know, Queen Victoria and Christopher Columbus are the two most prominent statues in our country. Right. It's both embarrassing and infuriating at the same time. Mm -hmm. And Queen, nobody has benefited more from the death and destruction of African people and civilization than Queen Victoria. You know? But um, the loyalist story now is where one, a lot of that kind of sugarcoating is done. So they talk about how after the American Revolution, these people who wanted to remain British, you know, they had to leave America, they were kicked out of America, and they were seeking freedom, and then they came to the Bahamas with their slaves, right? And of course, the story is not as simple as that. First of all, many of us who came over were runaways, black loyalists, and all of these things, right? The same Lord Dunmore, who fought in the American Revolution, became the governor of the Bahamas for nine years. Mm. And then he started to re-enslave about 80% mm. of the same black loyalists who fought for them. So we had accounts of people fighting side by side with people in the American Revolution on the British side. And then they came here, and then they would lie and say, oh no, and they re-enslaving these lords. You see what I said? So that was a huge thing that went on here. But our family line, I still try, like that patrilineal line, right. Gracie Ann Road, that went straight forward. So this museum is named after Pompey Road. That ain't our ancestor, but that's our kin. Okay. So okay. Gracie Ann Road, who is um Gracie Ann and, and, and who is um not crazy, uh, Blanche. Blanche. Okay. Blanche. Okay. Are you talking okay. about my grandma? <laughs> right. Right. Blanche. My, my yeah. grandma. Yeah. My grandma. Blanche. 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 Your grandmother Blanche Road. Right. From there. Right. Because I can get you a generation about me too. Right. right. Now I've been trying to find. So before they want you to say whether well, Davis is all originating Barry Tari. So you know, you know, you know, you hear that story. Story. Right. And then grandpa always used to tell me that his grandpa used to say that we was in the other slaves. Right, that's what I, my dad used to say too. Exactly. So, right. So, I, so at first, I thought I was just a result like, of the typical not wanting to deal right. with your history right. type of thing. Right. It is a hard pill to swallow and right. stuff, right? But now I find out that I have a lot of substance to it. So, there's two things. First of all, I do find a Davis line in Kid Island okay. that coincides with the Exuma one. So the whole notion of all Davis has come from Exuma, right. that ain't true. Not Moore's true. Island, Exuma, and Kid Island, and Fox Hill, they the big things. Okay. We were also, the Davis name was also here before um, the, the loyalists came, before the revolution, but it was a little scant. And our line was after the revolution, so we did come with loyalists. I believe, because okay. I've been finding there was a lot of British um, officers and stuff like that with their surname Davis and it was typical that um, when liberated Africans and stuff come on and I can talk about that too a little bit it was typical that they got recruited into these West Indian regiments and the, and the officer would always been like a white British person okay. and if, if they were African and stuff to be acclimatized they sometimes adopted the surname of their commanding officer and then of course remember I was telling you Vaguely, last time we say how I was doing research, and then I found this place called Freetown, and Freetown is right in our ancestral um, homestead in Kid Island. Okay, you understand? Okay. And then Freetown is related to that black loyalist thing. So you know, Freetown, Sierra Leone, is like the capital, and that's the notion of free blacks who fought for the British, who went over, and this stuff like that. So I believe that we that we that as, there might be a lot of truth in that. Right. Now when I look at the slave records for the Davises in Kid Island, it's only one man, right. Perot Davis, straight from Africa, blind man, lived till he was like 90. And okay. so it's either two streams, either we were black loyalists who came down to try to move away from slavery, try to re-enslave us and all that mm -hmm. stuff, but the Davis family from Kid Island so ambiguous, like, it's so hard to find stuff. Or um, we was um, a part of that, uh, Peru was just out there. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, fucking, as they would say in yeah. those days. Right. Because he, he was the guy, he was, and then all of there was like eight Davis slaves, and 
um, all of them were women, and it was just parole. You understand? Mm. So that line wouldn't have followed through slavery. They, right. they would have married someone else, or that's right, you know that's right, I mean? and stuff like that. So all that can be clues about our family history, but we also have them roots in Barry Tarry too. So, okay. um, so I don't know what happened there. I believe they might have been a bunch of brothers and stuff who, who might have been black loyalists, okay. might have been runaway slaves, or just might have been some were slaves, some were not loyalists. And I believe somehow like they dispersed like that because um, there's a lot of confusion with the Davis family. And that's the only family that's so common and you can't just go right to the slave records. And right, see, and see, oh, well, and yeah, see, right, right. Slaves named that I told you, yeah. he's very knowledgeable. Yeah. Very, very, very Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> We've been victims of this kind of very colonial, pro-British, you know, history. And uh, that, that kind of rhetoric of the uh, submissive slave, you know, or, and uh, everything that we got came from Britain, you know. So this, there's this concept in the Bahamas called the salt water underground railroad, right? Now, oftentimes it's overplayed as being when the British abolished the slave trade, and so it was illegal to bring people from Africa as slaves into the British Hemisphere, right? right. So after that happened, that was when this concept kind of became established in this, and then they kind of gave the British Navy all of the praises for liberating these Africans in the Bahamas, right? Okay. And in most cases, actually, it was typical being in sailors who did it, or they had their own mutiny on the boat. You right. understand? Right. Or the boat would hit a reef like that over there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the story of Madison, Washington, is one that's really been swept under the rug in American history because it really makes America look bad in some ways. You know, it represents just how bad it was, the type of attitudes. It ended up bubbling up into this huge court case where America was accusing Britain of stealing their property, that property was slaves. But it's considered the most successful slave revolt in the United States history because it ended with the freedom of at least 135 or so African American slaves, right? So 1841, and this is actually your best love story probably ever in your life too, anyway. So in 1841, I sure you watched the movie Django and Chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the inspiration about him going to rescue his beloved Brunhilde is based largely on like kind of mythical, allegorical life of Madison Washington. Okay. Right? So him and his wife was enslaved in Virginia. His wife's name is Susan. Him and his he, him and his wife left the plantation to go up the Underground Railroad. She was captured, sent back down into slavery. He made it up to Canada, worked for this very progressive white guy. He was miserable. He kind of threw people off because he was always so bitter. And you would assume that most people making up, most blacks making up to Canada would have been happy because they right. were escaped, right? But he famously said, liberty means nothing to me while my wife is a slave. Came back down the Underground Railroad, even though everybody was saying, don't do it, it's a suicide mission. Um, William Wells Brown, who the guy who wrote about his life, he inserts so much stuff in there that makes historians feel that his story is not legit and all this right, stuff. Right, right. That's why I put it down to allegory. So he talks about him crossing paths with Solomon Northup from 12 years a slave. That part actually has more historical credence than some of the other ones. Talk about him being six foot four, being a blacksmith. Um, Talking about him walking around with shocker keys in his jacket. They were throwing him in a dungeon, right. you know, and they coming back in the morning and everybody who was, all the slaves free, you know, and right. stuff like that. But I think that was the result of maybe other heroic runaways doing things and they kind of accredited it to him. That's what they meant by the allegory thing. But he went to back down to Virginia, luckily discovered his wife. When he discovered his wife, you know, he had a few dealings, then they were unfortunately discovered. And I skipped over plenty of details mm -hmm. just so it didn't take too long and the case might be coming, right? <laughs> so, Right, so um, after that, they was ordered to be sold separately into slavery, okay? Um, Madison Washington was in Hampton Roads, Virginia, and that was where they, they kind of left from. He met Elijah Morris, another man named Ben Blacksmith, and Doc Ruffin. So the Amistad also happened in the Bahamas. Remember I was telling you that? Yeah, you know, yeah, Bahamas, yes. The movie and all that. Yeah. And the different, that happened in 1839. By this point, that saltwater underground railroad concept was firmly established. Um, at that point, there was already five American ships that had been common there. A year before that, there was a ship called the Eleanor, the, um, the Iconium. All of these were American slave ships passing through that we took over and freed the slaves, selling them at Gambia, where we could eat our Kung Salad, Fox Hill, and all these places. Okay. Another important point. So these liberated Africans, many of them, the, especially the adults, they would have been the ones who was recruited into these West Indian regiments. 
So essentially, it was like a vague type of choice. You could be a slave or a vagrant, or right. you can work for us, get a rifle, right. and help us enforce the law. And of course, that was Russo Hart, so it's like a buffer, right? So they left from Hampton Roads, Virginia, in the fall of 1841, right? They were coming around to go to New Orleans. They kind of got blew off course, then they had the revolt. They made like a 10 part roots style series or something. Right. They did an episode just to show the fighting on the boat. How they took it. Elijah Morris called. Um, the, Elijah Morris was the second in command. Okay. He used to rowdy one. So remember, we did all that stuff in Gambia? Mm -hmm. Elijah Morris was that guy we was talking about, that the hero of Gambia who I was trying to push. You know what I mean? And he used to rowdy this guy in this revolt. Fire the first shot and the last shot. And Madison Washington probably spent more energy after he took the ship trying to keep everything cool because some of these Mandem slave master was on the ship. You know what I mean? But Madison Washington had a, a serious strategy going. He actually left the majority of the people in the slave hold because he didn't know he would have been able to trust right. in all of these things, right? Now they come into this island. Their first thought was to go to Africa. And then they was like, no, well, let's go into that island that we know called the Providence. So as they was coming in here now, um, they were surrounded by your typical Bahamian mariners who had the Americans on the ship shouting for help. Right. And they was making attempts to take the ship back as well. So they came into here. By the time they came into here, we already had big parades and parties going because we was used to this. Right. This is our big contribution to the the Bahamas' contribution to the black struggle, if you will. You know what I mean? Haiti's known for the revolution, right. Jamaica Maroon societies, right? So when they came into this harbor, 128 African American slaves were automatically freed. One had died at that point. Another one died a little later from wounds that he got during the revolt. Okay. Right? Now when the officers walked onto the ship now, remember all these guys are Africans who came here in the same way that they came here. So they treated Madison Washington as the captain. And so the original crew, you know, all the white guys, all the, the American slavers and have you and Spanish guys, whatever, they completely ignored them. And they're just like finely dressed, like African dressed, right, dress, right. right. And he treated Madison Washington like the captain, like kind of giving others to go ashore though. When he told him what happened, he boldly said in front of everybody, go, why the hell didn't you just kill everybody and throw them overboard? Now we gotta do all this stuff and go to court. Right. It was like, well, you don't know where you at. You don't know where you at. <laughs> <laughs> I was how to do it, and of course that induced this big time fail, right? So when these 128 slaves were freed, they were just, just the, you could only imagine the atmosphere and the, and the level of party. You right. understand what I'm saying? Now when Elijah Morris was looking around, the rowdy one, he saw a woman named Nancy Barton. He met Nancy Barton. He was like, you know, bragging. Yeah, that's me. And all this stuff. And him and Nancy Barton, they're the ones that settled in Gambia and got married. So all the Morrises coming out of Gambia descended from the from union between Elijah and Nancy. Okay. Now watch this though. As they was clearing everybody up, who do you think Madison Washington saw? Her. His wife. He saw his wife. His wife is on the ship the whole time. He didn't even know. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right? So wow. and then after all that. Court. And this is a happily ever after story. You know? right. This isn't one of those. Right. Even though they're also important, because every episode of slave resistance kind of induced that fail mm -hmm. and that realization to other people that look, these people they can do this thing right. the right. whole right. night, you know. Right. And those were more important than people signing the documents in Parliament and stuff, right? Yeah. So, but this is the most successful slave revolt in the United States history, based on. Death toll to those that won their freedom. Okay. Um, Stephen Dillett, who lived who lived in Balcony Elsh around the corner, uh, who was also the grandfather of James Weldon Johnson, okay. you know, yeah, who wrote Lift Every Voice and Sing. Him and a few other free blacks, they tried, they raised this money. So they got ships ready to go to Jamaica and other places. The hub is to separate them so that it wouldn't be so easy to find them in case they had lost the cases and stuff right. like that. Right. Unfortunately, part of the story though, and in every case, the dark side of this saltwater underground railroad is I don't want people to think that it's just, you know, what used to happen is those people that were the criminals who were bringing these slaves, in every case, they were compensated. It wasn't mm -hmm. so, it wasn't like they were thrown in jail. Right. Or anything like right. That. They were compensated and quite handsome, handsomely as a matter of fact. Man. In some cases, they made more than they would have made if they had gone through with the slave thing and, and done that. But that's a whole other issue. That was like a colonial government that was them trying to squash this beef between America and Britain. Mm -hmm. And so essentially America forced other people forced them to pay them 
for slaves that freed themselves and slave for us which is extremely ugly right on behalf of America right. yeah. so you can see why they avoid right. these that's right. that's right that's yeah. right that's right alright that's him that's him Christopher E. Davis second cousin we got another tour to give if you ever want to hear the stories of the Bahamas come to the Pompeii history of slavery in the Bahamas you'll see Chris he'll tell you everything it's my time for us to get something to eat I don't know about you but I'm here and all that, I'm pretty hungry. Y'all know where Gambia is? Y'all know where Gambia is? Y'all know where Adelaide is? That's my cousin and I'm proud of him, boy. Proud of him. Hanging out at that big yard, getting some lunch, having a couple of clicks, cotton fritters. Zeph was getting a uh, salad made. Fresh pump. Go check it out. Made no one. Come to catching fish, I'll try any method. I got my original rake and scrape fish calls from the Bahamas. Call them fish anymore. <laughs> Long live the pot cake. Far from homeless. 
very well tamed. Love good music and great vibes. Hot cake. In the pool. Casino here in the Atlantis. Um, very nice thing, always a good scene here at the Atlantis Casino, Atlantis Resort. We're to win some money tonight. We're gonna break the place. Those are maggots. Maggie snappers. I caught one of those last time I was here. Not that big, but it was big. In the ground. I have small ones that I can just turn them on. So do the tarpers? Yeah, there's a tarp. We haven't gone fishing, but we're going to bring you some fish. Not yet, yeah, look at that shark. That is huge. Sharks, tarpon, snappers. That's what I have. Yeah, stingray. They see where I opened the shark encounter. I was there for that. This brings back some crazy memories. Whoa, look at that, Zephyr. Beautiful. That's what that's what killed um, the crocodile hunter. That bar right here. Following us too. Look at those magic snappers. Margaret. Huge white grunt coming up to the surface. Well, it's because they know in the coolers here. Yellowtail snappers. All in one tank. Tarpon, the shark. Look at that Maggie just teasing me. He's teasing me, Zephyr. Everybody's getting ready for the party, I guess. 
which way we come in. Alright, it's been a long day. We're gonna end it here at the casino. Maybe go get something to eat. There's always room to get something to eat here in the Bahamas. Love the seafood. Turn two dollars into almost seventy. You can't beat that. I can't beat that. I don't know.